Last Drive with Graham Fletcher. Any new model is important to a manufacturer. Well, this week on Test Drive, we look at the latest Lada. This is the 1994 Lada Sagona, a car that Lada have very high hopes for. The question is, can it cut the mustard? Under the hood of the Sagona is a 1.5 litre inline four that still uses a two barrel carburetor rather than fuel injection. Under certain circumstances, the engine had a tendency to bog down because of the carburetor. Power is rated at 75 horsepower at 5,300 RPM. In the acceleration test, this equated to times of about 15 seconds, slow by any standard. Matched with this engine is a five-speed manual overdrive gearbox. It works well. The shift pattern is surprisingly crisp and the gates have a positive feel. On the other hand, the clutch is a horror. It has a tendency to grab and as the car warms up, a considerable amount of chatter develops neither of which are desirable, making the car a lot harder to drive than it otherwise would be. The Sagona uses rack and pinion steering. The feel is fairly positive, and despite the lack of power assist, the setup does not feel overly heavy. Even close parking maneuvers are accomplished with relative ease. On the highway, the feel becomes a little vague, a lot of which can be put down to the fact that the steering wheel is a small diameter, a diameter that is less than that of your average dinner plate. The result is that any small movement of the wheel results in the car darting in that direction. This larder is truly horrible through the pylon test. Now it's partly because of the amount of body roll, but it's also down to the fact that this tiny steering wheel is really Mickey Mouse and very difficult to handle. The suspension is comprised of McPherson struts up front and a cross beam with trailing arms in the rear. Now the ride is reasonably comfortable and with the exception of really rough roads and the pylon test, so are the handling characteristics. That said, there is an inordinate amount of body roll during fast cornering and a distinct amount of nosedive under hard braking. The brakes are comprised of front disc and rear drums. During the brake test, we required 123 feet to stop from 80k. While a little longer than usual, these figures are not out of line. The fact that the rear brakes needed adjustment and there was a considerable amount of brake chatter from the front certainly did not help things. Here, the benefit of the doubt has to go to the car because I don't know if the brakes have been abused before my test. There's an old saying, you should never judge a book by its cover. Well, this larder is a classic example because from afar, things look quite nice. However, closer examination reveals a very different story. The quality of the materials used throughout the car is poor to say the least. And the quality of the fit and finish? Well, it's quite simply laughable. The fit and finish problems were numerous to say the least. The gap between the hood and fender is huge. The fender flares were buckled and poorly attached. The door panels were loose. The right rear door jammed shut. The entire rear light cluster had been installed at an angle and the rear valance looked ready to drop off. One of the corners already broken. The very poor choice of interior materials was highlighted by the dash. The trunk on this new Sagona is quite large and quite well laid out. However, like the rest of the car, it has its shortcomings too. There's nothing down here to protect the spare tire. If you buy this car, do yourself a favor. Go to the hardware store and buy a piece of hardboard and fit it in underneath the carpet. That way, the next time you drop something heavy in there, you won't wipe out the sidewall. On a brighter note, the Lada comes with some good standard features. A locking gas cap, three-point seat belts for all outboard passengers, a great set of Goodyear all-season radials complete with a full-size spare, a very nice radio that comes with four AudioVox speakers, a fold-down rear seat, which by the way we couldn't lower because the right rear door was jammed, and a nifty device that will be welcomed by other road users. As you load the car up, a switch on the dash allows you to adjust the headlamps down meaning you don't blind oncoming drivers when the car is loaded. Elsewhere, the Lada features a complete analog dash, a rear seat that offers plenty of room and reasonable comfort, front bucket seats that are nicely shaped, and despite their soft nature, offer reasonable comfort. Well, that's it for this week's test drive. I think I've answered the question I posed off the top. I don't believe this car cuts the mustard. I know if I had $9,900 to spend on a new car, it would not be spent on a larder. Unfortunately, Test Drive taught me a lot more than I really needed to know.